Good morning, friends, and happy, happy Easter. Today is April 4th, year 2021, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of the Lord, and it is the 56th Sunday in unordinary time. A little intro to our service today. The festival of the resurrection of the Lord, or Easter Sunday, is the center of the Christian year. On this occasion, the church joyfully proclaims the good news that is at the very heart of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Easter Sunday is the Lord's Day writ large, a great annual celebration of Christ's resurrection on the first day of the week. Easter Sunday is something like the keystone of an arch, the top and center stone upon which all the other stones lean and depend, both in terms of its theological significance and its relation to other events in the Christian year. My friends, we welcome you to this celebrative Easter Sunday service. We also want to wish all those who are celebrating a birthday this month. Happy birthday to you. If we were together in our sanctuary, we would sing you our special birthday song, but please know that we are keeping you in our hearts and our minds and our prayers. Just a reminder that today is uh, also a communion Sunday and we'll be celebrating communion together. So if you'd like to partake in communion, I invite you to go now and prepare the elements so that you can be ready when it comes time in our service. So my friends, welcome. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us celebrate Easter Sunday together. Friends, I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Friends in Christ, Christ is risen. We have seen the glory of God. Friends, let us pray. Holy One, on this Easter day, we are especially reminded that you come to us with power beyond all knowing. Through Jesus, our Christ, you lift all things out of the dust you breathe love into every cell. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Living God, on the first day of the week, you brought to birth a new creation through the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Fill us with the hope and the joy of new beginnings so that we may share the good news of your liberating, life-giving power with all the world. We gather, O Lord, in thanksgiving and with great joy. We gather in your name to bless your holy name now and forever. Amen. is risen
morning, children. Happy Easter. I'm so glad you're here celebrating with us. Well, I have a few little friends to share with you today. When you think of Easter, you might think of bunny rabbits, right? It'd be the Easter rabbit. This one's Annabelle's. And then we also have two other little ones, right? Little brown guy. This one's holding a little something. Maybe you have some rabbits in your house, right? Some um, little bunny rabbits left over from last year's Easter celebration, or maybe even a rabbit as a pet. And then you might also be thinking about Easter eggs, right? Easter egg hunts. And usually when we open the egg, there's like a little surprise inside. This one has a little other friend. So they'll be sitting with us today as we think about our Easter message. Well, I wanted to go ahead and read you the Easter story. Now we won't start at the beginning because if you were with us last week, that covers Palm Sunday. But here we are picking up at the Last Supper. I'm sure you remember the Last Supper because we talk about it when we do communion, right? We have the bread and the juice, right? So this is the scene. Here we go. They had their supper and it says, after supper, they went to a garden to pray. But the men who didn't like Jesus sent soldiers to arrest him. Jesus was sent to die. His disciples were very sad, but Jesus had told them that he would rise after three days. On the third day, women went to Jesus's tomb. The tomb was open. Jesus was not there. Okay. That night, Jesus' disciples were in a locked room, and yet suddenly Jesus appeared. He was alive. Jesus said, go and tell everyone that if a person believes in me, they will be saved and they will live forever. This is the Easter story, that Jesus is alive today. And because he died for us, we will live too. Wow. It is such wonderful, wonderful news that because Jesus died for us and was raised from the dead, we can live forever. So I wanted to show you one more thing as we close and we think about this wonderful Easter story, this empty tomb. I wanted you to just look above me. Can you see? There's lots of beautiful, beautiful depictions of the end of Jesus's ministry. But I want you to look right here at this big one right here. Who's this? That's Jesus, that's right. We have someone here, also part of the Easter story. One of the women at the tomb, right? Maybe Mary. And what's above there? That big dark spot, can you see? That's the tomb, right? Tomb, it's a, basically a word for this place that was dug out of the earth where they put the people who had died. And that's where Jesus's body was, but it is empty. But we actually see someone in here, right? Can you see that? What do you see? And there's something behind their back, right? It's wings, it's wings. In one of our versions of the Easter story that's actually depicted here in this book, there's an angel sitting at the tomb. And the angel says that Jesus has gone ahead of them. So we do have an empty tomb, but we have a little angel sneaking in there too, telling us this good news, reminding us this good news, right? And then behind the tomb, we have a reminder all the way up in the tippy tippy top, right? Of the cross, right? And that's a good reminder that Jesus did all of this for us and he died, but was raised again. And the tomb was empty, meaning that death is no more for us. So. Last year, um, a few years ago, back when we were meeting together in between services of Easter Sunday, because we had three, I made a little drawing and I thought I'd like to share it with you. I drew the empty tomb. And so it's a little bit easier to see here, but it's just this cutout, right? And the stone has rolled away and it's empty. And whoever thought that something being empty would make us happy, right? But we can go about this coming week and this coming year and the rest of our lives remembering that the good news is that the tomb was empty because Jesus was resurrected. And that means we will be too. So 
I'll invite you to join me in prayer as we close. Dear God, thank you for your love that saved us and brings us new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, children, and happy Easter. Jesus' rising from the dead assures us that we, too, have been given new life. Let us repent of our sin before God and before one another, certain of God's mercy. All-knowing, all-powerful God, we confess that even on this most holy day, we find it hard to believe in the victory over death shown to us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess our utter dependence on you, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Without your astonishing appearance to our ancestors and your stunning presence throughout the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us and transform us that in every way our work and prayer 
will make whole what is broken, bring justice, and give peace on earth. Amen. By the grace of God and the witness of our ancestors, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is our rock and our salvation. God speaks these promises. You shall not die, but live. The rejected cornerstone has become your strength and your song. Through the saving love of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, one God who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word we may receive new life. Amen. I read now from the Gospel according to John, beginning at chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May the Lord bless to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture.
stands with compassion for our needs, the Risen One stands beside us, calling our names. Let us, with that same mercy, bring forth tithes and offerings to relieve the suffering of this world and to proclaim far and wide the good news of resurrection life. Please join me as we dedicate our gifts together. Holy God, you shower us with gifts so abundant we cannot measure them all. You give us life itself and the power to befriend our companions in the world. Bless these gifts for the sake of those in need. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In every time and every age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks. For your mercy is sure and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, you gave us Christ Jesus, who frees us from darkness and lights our path to endless renewal and life eternal. And so with all of creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the saints of every age, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage, thwart the designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty, to confuse the tricksters, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things, to give hope to those who long for justice and peace. We remember that on the night he was betrayed, having gathered his friends at the table, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, my friends, remembering our Lord's self-giving love, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and our teacher today and always. Now come, O Prince of Peace, Spirit of love, breath of life. Bring to all this hurting world the joy that Mary knew and teach us to proclaim with her, I have seen the Lord. In the unity of the Holy Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, now and forever. Amen.
God of endless life and new beginnings, we give thanks for your goodness and steadfast love. Hear now our prayers, our prayers for the church throughout the world, that we may be faithful witnesses to the resurrection, so that all may come to believe and have new life in Christ. For the people and leaders of every nation, that your boundless grace, which shows no partiality, might bring Christ's reign of peace and justice to all. For all those who are despised, rejected, and oppressed, that they may know the liberating power of the gospel and rejoice and be glad in the day of the Lord. For those who weep like Mary at the tomb, that their tears of sorrow may turn to cries of joy in the presence of the risen Christ. And for the promise of a new creation, where all creatures may live together in safety, and none shall hurt or destroy on your holy mountain. Lord, we especially ask for your loving arms to extend to Jeb, Dave, to Paul and Jackie, to Joanne and George, to Margie and Steve. Bless them, O Lord. God, our strength and our salvation, we pray all these things in resurrection hope and with the confidence that you have already answered us. Through Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now together with one voice, we pray the prayer that our resurrected Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us. The cup of salvation poured out for us. Friends in Christ, we come to the Lord's table broken, and through the love of the resurrected Christ, we leave having been made whole. Thanks be to God.
disciples of the risen Lord. Go from here renewed and strong, knowing that the Lord is alive, almighty, and present. Look for the blessings that await you this week and live in the story of hope. Now may the truth of the empty tomb, the astonishing reality of Jesus's resurrection, keep you fearless and sure that you will see the resurrected one again and again in this life. May the power of God's endless love surround you and guide you this day and always. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God bless you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we'll see you next week.